Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Purization. Today's topic is targeting belly fat and loose skin myths and realities. Very, very popular topic. First question is, can you spot reduce belly fat? What is spot reduction? It's the ability to burn fat from a specific chosen place. Like I want to burn fat from here or not from here. I want to burn fat on my abs, but not from my butt. YouTube algorithm doesn't let me swear. I think that a word is a swear word. In any case, we have some good news, some bad news, and some worse news. So the good news is that a few actually very well conducted, very precise studies have shown that fat comes off a little bit more off of areas of high adjacent muscle activity versus low ones. So if they, they've had uh, a few studies, I think, where folks train one leg and not the other, or train one leg more than the other, and the subcutaneous under the skin fat on the trained leg reduced a little bit more than the fat on the other leg. So uh, interesting, curious result, makes a little bit of physiological sense. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool, well, very, very hopeful. The bad news is that this slightly amount is so tiny, it is almost immeasurable. And uh, there aren't actually even enough studies to replicate this effect to tell us that it's not just measurement error. So good news on those studies, bad news is maybe they don't say what we want them to say. And unfortunately, we have worse news. Your abdominal region can only be so active. I mean, you can move your arms and legs around a lot. How the hell do you move your abdominal region a lot without really just doing crunches or doing sort of hardcore work that requires a lot of effort? I mean, even if you could burn fat in a spot-reduced way from working your core more than everything else, you'd have to do a completely unrealistic number of crunches or back raises or something like that because we're talking about tiny, tiny differences. You'd have to do like 5,000 crunches a day. Do not try that at home, for the love of God, uh, in order to get some kind of effect that is maybe detectable on some sort of scanner and maybe after months and months of you doing it is detectable on your body. So certainly the fatigue, the time use, all that stuff just does not add up, right? You know, versus like if, you know, if it's true that areas of high effort really are, uh, you know, promote local fat burning, then, you know, what's always active, your forearm muscles are always active, move your fingers. When you're walking around, your calves are always active. And that actually would make some sense because your calves and forearms are usually much leaner than everything else. Uh, there's an alternate explanation for that. You tend to have people tend to have what's called central adiposity. More of your fat is stored in your core for at least two reasons. It doesn't slow down your limb movements. If you stored your fat in your limbs, it'd make you much, much worse at athletic pursuits or moving your limbs quickly. Uh, in an evolutionary perspective, that's not really a good idea. And also, generally speaking, your fat stored around your core because it keeps your organs both safe in the sense that it's an extra boundary layer for any kind of injury potential. Like if a lion bites you and you have a lot of fat, it could just bite through your fat and not through your muscle. You somehow get away and then it heals up and you're fine. Whereas if you're super lean, that lion's getting into some of that muscle and might just kill your ass or make you permanently maimed. And also your fat protects your organs from extreme cold. So uh, that's the thing is very, very big reasons why central adiposity tends to be a tendency in almost all human groups and almost all individual humans and why that local fat burning effect for more movement may not actually be the thing that explains why your calves and forearms are so much leaner than the rest of you. So uh, some not so great news. So at the end of the day, for most intents and purposes, can you spot reduce your belly fat? Uh, pretty much no. And I'm really sorry, I wish I had better news, but for the most part, the answer is not really. Now, what does determine fat loss? Well, genetics and a calorie deficit are really the huge factors there. So fat tends to come off most rapidly from the places onto which it is placed most rapidly. So if you gain fat and you gain it around your abdominal area, when you start losing fat, you usually lose the most around your abdominal area. That's a very good thing because generally if you have a problem area, then that's the area that's going to get the smallest when you actually uh, diet for fat or it's going to get the smallest the fastest. It's like you start dieting for fat and all of a sudden your calves are competition lean a week later and your abs are just as flabby as before, that's very, very unlikely. So it tends to happen in the similar proportion of how you gain to how you lose. And if you run a sustained caloric deficit, you almost certainly will lose fat and you will lose plenty of it. In addition to that, if you uh, weight train regularly and you eat plenty of protein, you know, train three to five times a week, sort of whole body training and eat a gram of protein per pound of uh, body weight or so, then you can pretty much lose almost exclusively, unless you're very exotically big or exotically lean already, you can pretty much lose uh, only fat or mostly fat and lose zero or very little muscle. And that's going to make you much healthier, much fitter, and it's going to make you look way different, probably uh, make you look uh, more of how you like. So these are very attainable goals. 
most people can get much, much leaner than they are. And it's not some kind of magic thing you have to figure out. It's regular weight training, plenty of protein, nice healthy diet, create a sustained deficit, and voila, months later, you're much leaner. Take a maintenance break, hit it again for a few months, and you're way, way leaner. And that's usually people can, can operate like that pretty well. And a really cool insight is a lot of folks, and this is a really big myth, seem to think that it takes drugs to get really lean. Like, oh, well, I'm not on those crazy fat burners. It turns out natural body, this is something that um, – people in the actual bodybuilding community know that most people outside of it don't. You know, Drug-using bodybuilders that are familiar with natural bodybuilding actually know that natural bodybuilders tend to get and especially look leaner than drug-using bodybuilders, okay? If you actually look up natural bodybuilders that consistently win shows, they have what's called like a natty look, a natty leanness that just baffles the imagination. And most drug-using bodybuilders would love to look like that. One of it's a body water thing. Try as you might, uh, anabolic steroids specifically tend to hold body water more. So natties can actually get crispier because they don't have that problem, so to speak. Now, of course, they're much smaller, but they do get super, super lean. And I don't know how much of it is them looking lean and being lean, but I'll, I'll put you this way. Um, Google or Instagram search this gentleman named Marvin Physique. Okay, he's one of Jared's Feather's clients. He lives in Hong Kong. And you, if you look at some of his competition pictures or some of his few days out before competition pictures, so he has striations on his glutes leading all the way into the nether regions. The, sh the shit is just baffling. Natural bodybuilders have gotten so lean, it makes no sense. Their striations, when I met him in person, like all up and down his face, it was insane. Never taken a drug in his life. So don't get into your head that you can't get super lean without drugs. Bullshit. You can't get super lean at 250 pounds without drugs, but at 170, 160, 150, you can be shredded out of your mind and you don't have to take a single drug. So that's actually the really, really good news. Now, on to the next very related topic. What about loose skin? Okay. When you put on lots of weight, especially rapidly, skin has to be grown to fit around it all. Otherwise, you would feel like a popping balloon all the time, which would be terrible. So when you lose weight, some skin resorption does actually occur. You actually do reduce how much skin you have when you lose weight, but it's not a ton and you do end up keeping a lot of the skin around. It's now a little bit looser. And if you gained a lot of weight really fast and then you lost a lot of weight, doesn't really matter how fast you lost it, you're going to tend to see that visually. And if it was a lot, a lot, you can see it pretty substantially. There are cosmetic solutions that temporarily tighten up the skin, certain creams you can apply, and that works pretty well. But in reality, once you have a lot of loose skin, it's probably going to be there more or less for the long term, okay? Now, this is to say you should not fall for products that are gimmicky that promise to tighten the skin. They're mostly BS, and they pretty much don't work outside of like you apply them, your skin gets a little tighter, four hours later they uh, come off your skin and your skin go back goes back to normal. So there's products that proclaim to tighten up your skin substantially over the course of uh, time that you apply them for weeks and weeks and your skin stays that tight, that almost just certainly doesn't happen. And if it happens, it's to a very, very tiny extent. For huge amounts of loose skin, surgery to remove the cut out the loose skin and sort of clip it back together is actually incredibly effective. However, the big downside is surgery is surgery. For the time being, they have to open you up. They have to sedate you. They have to cut. There's going to be a scar, all this crazy ass shit. There's going to be weeks and weeks and weeks of recovery time, potential sensation issues where you can't feel your skin on that part anymore because the nerves deaden. It's a serious thing. So it's not for everyone and it's not for every occasion. So if you have tons of like, if you've been 450 pounds and now you're living life at 200 pounds, you have tons of loose skin. Yeah, get the surgery. It's a really good idea in most cases, as long as your doctor approves it, of course. But you know, if you were 250 and now you're 200, Oh, man, you know, like people probably can't even tell you have loose skin unless you really bend over and take the world's shittiest photograph under the worst lighting. So I wouldn't bother with the surgery then because it's going to be a lot of really intense shit, a lot of recovery for maybe no apparent visual difference to everyone or to, to most anyone. You say, hey, I got my skin removal surgery. What do you guys think? And people are going to be like, I didn't know you had that problem. Didn't seem like you did. And now it just looks like you have a big ass scar. Congratulations. Not the greatest thing in the world. Best protection against loose skin, and this sucks to say, but most of you don't have loose skin yet, and you shouldn't, is don't gain a ton of fat really rapidly or at all at any point. So if you're a bodybuilder and you want to get jacked, which is what I was and am and which is what I wanted, don't get enormous and lose sight of your abs. Always, like if you don't have abs now, don't worry about it. When you get abs eventually and you start massing back up as a bodybuilder, just make sure you always see a little bit of your faintness of abs. Okay? If you completely miss on your abs, if you gain from there, you're probably going to get some loose skin unless you're genetically really lucky and your skin's really stretchy, right? So don't get to be a super fat mess 
I did that back in my natty days. I got to 270 drug free. I gained a fuckload of fat. And now in like my most musculars and stuff, I have some loose skin on my lower abs and it blows and I hate it. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it sucks. And I just wish I never did that. So some hard earned wisdom from me to you. Now, to leave on a positive note, it sucks for now that the options for targeted fat loss and sort of skincare are super limited, okay? But this will change. Over the next approximately 20 years, that's a pretty pessimistic take, it's highly likely that advanced medical techniques will get really, really crazy slowly and steadily and then exponentially at some point and probably will get a solution to spot reduction and very likely get a solution to loose skin as well that works at some nanoscale micro level and all of a sudden you don't need surgery and voila, all your loose skin is gone. It's coming. So I guess what I'm saying is invest in biotech. I don't have any crazy scams to sell you on that, but I'll think of some and then you can invest in my biotech company. It'll be called biotech company uh, to register trademark. But in any case, this is all in the future. These will be solved problems. They're not yet, but they're well on their way. Go to school, learn science, help become a part of the solution. Go to a laboratory, work and make some crazy things. The future will be amazing. And hopefully I'll see you there. Until then, see you in the next video.